Hi everybody, it's Elliot here from East Coast Podiatry in Singapore. Today I'm joined with Xuan Li from Tomasic Junior College, who's going to be asking me questions about ballet dancers and plantar fasciitis. Firstly, I think I would like to start off with a general question, which is how common is plantar fasciitis in ballet dancers and how severely does it impact them? Just for the people at home, plantar fasciitis is a band of tissue at the bottom of the foot that runs from the heel bone to the big toe and a few other branches. So a lot of people will complain of heel pain right at the base of the heel. They'll complain of morning pain. They'll complain that when they sit for too long and then they stand, they get pain. This is plantar fasciitis. For one of my colleagues, he did actually have a ballet dancer with plantar fasciitis, which was accompanied with uh, an Achilles rupture. With this, I wouldn't say they necessarily get it during their ballet dancing career. It might be a more progressive Thing. With ballet, where they're on their tippy toes for vast majorities of the time, the calf muscle is very contracted. When any muscle is in a shortened state for long periods of time, it becomes tight. And with this, it affects the tendon, which ultimately led to that rupture. With that, it affects everything at the bottom of the foot as well. So most of my patients with heel pain will all complain that their calf is incredibly tight as well. So it's a very good question because it's something that's very progressive and may affect them later in life. So in terms of ballet dancers that do have plantar fasciitis, how severely might this impact them maybe in their daily life or their ballet? With regards to these uh, ballet dancers, a lot of them will be doing things on the side like running, um, other various sports. And if you've got heel pain, it's really disabling. It will really impact your life and stop you from doing all the other things that you like to do. Okay, for the next question, I'll be inviting my classmate Ung Wei to take over my seat. Hi Elliot. Hey Ung Wei. So my question to you is, what are some consequences of plantar fasciitis that make it severe and urgent to address? So you've got the very acute stage, which your body can actually heal on its own. Then you've got the chronic stage. And this is where your body doesn't see it as a priority anymore it leaves it alone, but you're in incredible pain. This is where the tissue is not as healthy as it once was before, and it can lead to rupture. Now, if you rupture your plantar fasciitis, it can affect the way you walk. If your heel is hurting and it's your plantar fascia, it's abnormal, just get it treated, get it sorted, and then it's easier, more manageable for you going forward. So Elliot, my next question to you is, how do you diagnose plantar fasciitis? So when the patient will come to clinic, what we do is use diagnostic ultrasound. So the reason why you'd use this is it's non-harmful to the patient. You get a clearer image of the tissue and what you're looking at. So by doing this, you can then classify the injury so you get your diagnosis very quick. For other professionals, they may send for an MRI. MRI is mainly to try and rule out other conditions, but for most people, it'll be the ultrasound. Thank you for the insightful answer. For the next question, I'll invite my classmate, Chi En. Hi, Elliot. Hi, Chi En. So my question for you is, what are your opinions on arch taping and what are some limitations of it? So with uh, taping, the main principle behind it is to lift the skin up so it doesn't press too much on the injury. It also increases blood flow, so it's a bit like a tent. It lifts it up and blood can get underneath. It does provide a lot of relief, but the limitations are tape doesn't last forever, so you've got to keep applying it, and there's a special technique to actually do it and apply it. So if you don't know how to properly apply it, you're essentially not getting the best beneficial uh, outcome that you want. Okay, for my last question, how does massaging the plantar fascia increase the rate of recovery for plantar fasciitis? Is there an ideal way in which it should be done? With massaging, there's no exact protocol in place on how people are meant to do it. It's different every single time you go in. The pressure that they do, how they actually do it, it varies every time. So with that, it's a risk and one that you shouldn't take. A patient's best bet is using treatment modalities like focal shockwave, EMTT, maybe even superinductive system, just to trigger a healing response that's higher than what the body can actually do on its own. But yeah, excellent question. Okay, so thank you for coming down, Chiyoung. I hope I answered all your questions and it was very educational for yourself and also educational for everybody at home as well. So please like, leave a comment below, and if you or anybody else is suffering from plantar fasciitis or heel pain, uh, go see a podiatrist for some foot advice. Okay, take care. Thank you for watching. If you find our podiatry videos informative, please like and share them with someone who might find them useful. If you need to contact us or find one of our clinics, 
Go ahead and take a screenshot now. To subscribe, you can click this button over here. See you in the next video.